Welcome back to Al's Geek Lab. This video is a tribute to Ward Christensen, the co-creator of the Bulletin Board system, a pre-internet online service that effectively launched what we now know to be social media. Recently, Ward sadly passed away aged 78. In the late 1970s, before the internet as we know it, two men forever changed the world of digital communication. One of them was Ward Christensen, the co-creator of the first ever dial-up bulletin board system, or BBS, a groundbreaking invention that laid the foundation for our modern online communities. Christensen, along with his colleague Randy Seuss, gave rise to the BBS in 1978, at a time when computers were largely confined to academia and corporations. The BBS allowed hobbyists and computer enthusiasts to connect, share files, and communicate in ways that had never before been possible. It was during the Great Blizzard of 1978, when travel in Chicago became nearly impossible, that Christensen and Seuss got an idea. Although they couldn't physically meet with their friends at their club, the Chicago Area Computer Hobbyists Exchange, or CACHE, they still wanted to keep everyone connected. With Randy assembling the hardware and Ward writing the software, they created a digital space where people could leave messages, much like a pushpin bulletin board that you'd see at a local grocery store. The result was the first BBS, named CBBS, which went live on February 16th, 1978. Through CBBS, Users with modems could dial into the system, leave messages, transfer files, and even play games later on. It was a revolution in how people connected. January 16th, 1978, I went out to go to work and it had been snowing most of the night and I was unable to, uh, to get out because it just kept snowing and kept snowing. So I think I shoveled for like two hours and probably came in at like 9.30, 10 o'clock and, and realized I was not going to work that day. So I called Randy and I said, you know, I've got the computer club recorder where people can call to find out when the next meeting is and to leave questions and things like that. And why not take that line and, and put a system on it that people could upload newsletters and things like that, uh, newsletter articles and so on, and we could do a club project. And I remember uh, he, he said essentially that that was, sounded like a neat idea, but forget the club because you know what, what a, a committee run something will be, it'll take it forever to happen. I had too many years in the Navy to uh, uh, to know. No, well, let's not let's not talk about it. Just do it. it took me uh, about two weeks, probably about the end of the month, uh, before I uh, had some software ready to test and uh, a little bit of playing around and let a few friends know it was there and try it and get some early feedback on things that it needed and and. Uh, uh, basically, after after the two weeks of, of designing and testing and put it online and refined it a little, and we called it a month, uh, so February 16th became the sort of arbitrary uh, birth date of it. And, uh, and it happened so quickly because of Randy's uh, uh, brilliant initiative in, in pulling it back from being a club project, which would take forever and, and would be something more like the ARPANET that I had been in, which had a lot of people talking about a lot of good ideas, but nobody was just getting down and actually uh, turning, plugging in their soldering iron, so it wasn't happening. CBBS and most of the other BBSs that came after it were free to access. Before CBBS, there were a very small amount of other similar services such as CompuServe that did exist, although Ward and Seuss may not have actually been aware of them. These services were extremely expensive to use. These proprietary services could cost as much as $30 an hour in 1970s dollars or $130 an hour in today's money. BBSs quickly spread, inspiring thousands of hobbyist communities across the globe. Many of these BBSs even led to the rise of multiplayer online gaming, message boards, online real-time chat, and the shareware scene, where companies like Epic Games and id Software got their start. If you're interested in knowing more about bulletin board systems, check out my eight-part video documentary series called Back to the BBS, where I show what BBSs were and show how they are making a bit of a comeback in modern times. There's also Jason Scott's excellent documentary called The BBS Documentary, which is now free on YouTube. Links to both are in the description. 
Also, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. You can also check out my Patreon site for more goodies and early access videos. Check out patreon.com forward slash AlsGeekLab for more information. Despite his incredible contributions, Christensen kept a low profile. After inventing BBSs and the file transfer protocol X modem, which enabled the stable transfer of files over telephone lines, Christensen continued working quietly at IBM until his retirement in 2012. The whole BBS thing was for our computer club to be able to produce newsletters. That was the whole idea of it. It worked. From wherever it went from then, fine. And, uh, and that's how this beast uh, came out of it uh, and ran for many years. And I don't, I don't claim to have done anything special. And it was sort of like if you bring two more than half critical masses together, it's going to happen. And that was what was happening to the technology at the time. Even though Ward laid the groundwork for much of what we recognize today as online communication, Ward remained humble and unassuming. Jason Scott, the creator of BBS the documentary, said Ward was exactly as he looked, quiet, gentle, and never seeking the spotlight. Jason Scott went on to say that Ward never bragged about his achievements. He was content watching the world benefit from his innovations without feeling the need to claim any glory. Sadly, on October 11th, 2024, at the age of 78, Ward Christensen passed away. His quiet legacy has touched the lives of millions, even if they never knew his name. Without BBSs, much of our online culture, message boards, file sharing and digital community building might not exist as we know it today. Fortunately, Christensen's contributions did not go unnoticed by his peers. In 1992, he received two Dvorak Awards for his work in telecommunications. The following year, he was honoured with the Pioneer Award from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Though dial-up BBSs are largely a thing of the past, the spirit of human connection they fostered lives on in today's social networks, message boards and multiplayer games. As we look back, we can thank Ward Christensen for quietly creating a new world, one where anyone with a computer and a modem could connect and share. Ward Christensen may not have been a household name, but his impact on the digital world is immeasurable. So next time you send a message online or join an internet community, give a moment to thank this quiet pioneer. Rest in peace, Ward Christensen. We thank you for your part in creating the online connected world. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel for more similar stuff. And also send me a like or drop a comment. I also have a Patreon channel where you can get early access to content I make as well as some extra bonus material, as well as your name up at the end of the credits like these lovely people who are flashing by right now. If you'd like to join them and support the channel, then head over to patreon.com forward slash Lab. Until the next video, thanks very much for watching and be excellent to each other.